Welcome to the workshop everyone. This video has been a long time coming. I've been meaning to do it since we got our lithium batteries, but it's it's been difficult to have all the pieces of the puzzle ready to go, ready to present to you in a cohesive, meaningful way. So I'm not going to wait any longer. I'll post these parts of the puzzle in chunks and then uh, you can view the ones you want to see and skip the rest. And, and that allows me to get them out too. So this video is going to be about the lithium polymer batteries and the heater. These are CALB batteries, China Aviation Lithium Battery Pack. Um, it consists of eight individual 180 amp hour cells wired in two parallel four series. And uh, it's in a contain containment box I made for it. And then the inverter is strapped to the side here. And before I talk about anything, uh, safety is the number one priority. Um, for example, if you had a number 13 wrench and you dropped it across the terminals, it would instantly turn bright red and melt. Uh, unlike a lead acid battery, these have such low resistance that they can dump two to 5,000 amps through whatever you put across it. So I'll show you here in a sec. I've got a fuse mounted mid-pack, a 250 amp fuse, and uh, as you can see a, th a thick Lexan cover on the top to prevent any foreign metals from getting on top there. But if you're working with the battery, it's always good to remove a ring on, and any metal watch. In this case I'm using some hot pink hockey tape. Perfect. Yeah. Safety first. Okay, so this is the pack opened up with the cover open. Uh, as you can see the eight cells. This rainbow colored ribbon cable has a tap for each of the cells to measure its individual voltage. That way if the battery monitoring system uh, detects any of the cells are too low or too high that it will shut down charging and shut down the the uh, load on those cells or on all cells. It'll just shut the whole thing down. So it's the the uh, end all safety. Now the the topic of the video again is to get a heater installed in this pack. It's only about 10 degrees Celsius in the garage right now and they're cold. They're quite cool. So let's flip it over and get the uh, bottom of these cells exposed. We're going to cut an aluminum plate to to act as a heat spreader and then I got on eBay these uh, silicone heater mats. It's a 200 millimeter square silicone heater mat by Kinovo, a thermal part of your success, and uh, install that on that aluminum plate, cut some recesses so that it all fits back and uh, then let's get to testing it. So this is the aluminum plate. Here you can see the uh, silicone mat with a self-adhesive backing. It's stuck right on there. And then that uh, same gasket material that I used for the to space out the Sikaflex when I was putting the adhesive in there on the, on the main fiberglass panels. Same stuff I used there. Okay, to control the temperature, I got one of these Inkbird uh, thermostat control, temperature control deals off of Amazon. I've had it laying around for a while for other sous vide projects. And I just tried it out quickly. Uh, it runs off 110, so that wouldn't work permanently, but uh, running off of 110 and switching the 12 volt uh, heater, it was terrible. It would overshoot by 10 degrees and then and then fall below 10 degrees below the set point. Um, it's just not accurate enough because it doesn't have a PID loop in it. It's just a basic dumb thermostat. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna utilize some old Arduino stuff I've had laying around. This is an Arduino Uno a screw shield and a, an LCD. These are really nice because they just stack up like so. And I got to power it somehow. 
negative, positive. This is a uh, DS1820. It's a one-wire protocol uh, digital thermometer and some electricity. Okay, probably missed that. So I just coded up a quick sketch in uh, the Arduino IDE, and it's basically a play on a, a, a sous vide controller. But basically, basically what's going on here? Arduino senses the temperature off of this DS1820, and uh, then uses the sensory data from there to control this SSR. Now. 400 watts at 12 volts is 30 amps and uh, I just realized a while ago these are only 25 amp SSRs, if that. So let's see what I do here. 12 seconds later. Okay, so here's the overview of what I got going on. The heater is embedded in the bottom of the batteries, as you've seen. The red wire is the NTC thermistor on the uh, heater pad itself. These really nice fiberglass jacketed cables are the heater coiled up here. Powered directly off the battery with no fuse, switched by a Bosch 40 amp relay, and that relay is switched by a Flutec SSR, which I don't trust to switch that much current. That is all being uh, temperature controlled by the Arduino and then I've got my fluke multimeter here with the uh, k-type thermal couple as a reference so let's zoom in and have a look so as you can see it boots up here and then in here I set the temperature currently the set points at 20 and it's uh, currently measuring 16 and so then it's calculating 34% duty cycle to run the heater. So I'm not sure if you can see it down here, the uh, LED on the SSR. Here we go. You can see it's clicking on, and it's on a 10% or rather a 10 second loop. And so now it's running 35% of 10 seconds, cycling on and off. And it just does it that way to. Uh, use a regular mechanical relay and not depend on solid state stuff. So let's let it go for a while and see how it stabilizes. So it's only been running about five minutes here and you can see it's already at 20 degrees Celsius. Let me let me adjust the contrast on that. There you go. So, as I said, the uh, set point is 20. It's only been running five minutes, although it came from 16 degrees. Uh, and now it's at 20.25. And you can see the percentage of the time, the percentage of the 10 seconds that the relay clicks in is down to 4% and it just keeps dropping here. See that? So as it gets closer, the amount of time the relay goes on reduces so that it doesn't overshoot. It prevents that thermostat uh, issue where it overshoots and then, and then undershoots, just up and down, up and down. So that's a pretty good test, I'd say. Now, this is all just fabric cobbled together. I wouldn't... Uh, recommend anyone even test in this manner, but uh, I did. Don't do as I do, do as I say. Okay, so I think that wraps it up for today. I'm going to monitor it for a little while here longer, but it seems to be stable at 20 degrees, which is where I set it. Uh, again, you would never power it off of, a, off of itself like this, yeah, except for extreme examples when you're avoiding disaster. But uh, the real use case is early fall and late winter when uh, it's parked here at the house, but we're at work all week, but we want to take it out on the weekends. And the uh, 
battery is just hovering right around the zero mark and it dips below zero at the night. Not really a problem if you're not using it, but uh, it can't charge unless it's above zero. Even if it's a full bright sunny day, it's a big thermal mass, slow to heat up and slow to cool down. So if it goes down below zero and it's sitting at minus two till two o'clock in the afternoon, it won't charge. The, the solar controller will not charge it. And so the way I'm going to wire this is I have 1400 watts of solar on the roof. I will, and this heater is only 400 watts, but I've got a surplus of solar on the roof going to waste. Uh, so I'm going to have the, uh, I'm going to wire up a nice little controller package, which will use that power to heat the battery and bring it up and keep it around five or higher. If it's above five and it needs to be charged, I'll cut the heat at five degrees and let all the power go into charging. But if it's uh, fully charged and five degrees still, but it's full, then I'll just heat it up anyway. Uh, run it right to 20 degrees Celsius or so. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. Hope you uh, enjoyed it, first of all. If you have any huge uh, warnings or advice for why I shouldn't heat the batteries in this way, let me know. But Teslas do it, so I think I'm fairly safe as long as I wire it more safely than this. So anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.